So part five, I titled it, How to See Things You Cannot See. And of course, we only get our spiritual hearing and spiritual eyesight through the power of his Ruach living in us and through us. In Matthew chapter 13, 13 through 17, we read, because of this, I speak to them in parables. Because seeing, they do not see. And hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is completely filled which says, hearing you shall hear and by no means understand and seeing you shall see. Don't forget to record, Libby. Do what, Mary? Don't forget to record. I don't see the record button yet. Are you kidding me? Well, oh, it's on. It's on. Okay, it's recording good. Up in the left hand, it's still recording. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, and Matthew 13, 14, and in them the prophecy of Isaiah is completely filled, which says, hearing you shall hear, and by no means understand, and seeing you shall see, and by no means perceive. For the heart of this people has become thickened, and their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand with their heart and turn back and I heal them and that came from Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 through 10 and blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly, I say to you that many prophets and righteous ones longed to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. So, as we discussed earlier, true believers have supernatural spiritual sight and hearing, which confounds at times and frustrates intellectuals. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, we read, but Elohim has chosen the foolish matters of the world to put to shame the wise. And Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put to shame the strong. Believers should value and place the spiritual over the natural or the physical realm. And as we've seen, this world pushes flesh, 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 self gratification, unimaginable sins, do what thy will propaganda. It pushes self sabotage, and the devil sits back and laughs. All the devil can do is hate. There is no love in the devil. We really need to pray for this upcoming generation and ourselves as well with all the propaganda that's being pushed, with all the lies that are being told, because especially the upcoming generation have been targeted because 
you know, Yahweh's word says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he grows old, he will not depart from it. So that is a solid truth. And the world can use that as well. And that's why they, they, they have the Disney worlds. That's why they have the, the game rooms and playrooms for the children in casinos. That's what the enemy is doing. Satan knows Yahweh's word just like we know Yahweh's word. And the upcoming generation, they don't even know the truth from fiction. What a different world this would have been if children were raised up in the way they should go, following Yahusha rather than following the mass distractions all around them and the glittering magic all around them that the, this fallen world bombards them with. It was the lack of acceptance and honor of Yahuwah and his word and not submitting to his delegated authorities that landed us where we are today. And that was the core root problem of Korah. He showed non-acceptance, he showed dishonor, and he wasn't going to bow down to Moses and Aaron as Yahuwah's delegated authority. And Yahuwah is not going to supersede those that he's placed in delegated authority. But again, we talked about you have to make sure that these people that have these positions in religion versus a relationship with Yahusha are truly his are truly under his delegated delegated authority and again you will know them by their fruit so let's take a listen to this last part spiritual sight these are things that i've been pondering as i was reading reading about cora and of course, we know that Korah was the grandson of Kohath. And he began this whole desert conspiracy with another group of Reubenites, malcontents, namely Dathan and Abiran, sons of Eliab and On, son of Peleth. In dishonor, they roused a group of 250 men together to challenge the honor of Moses and Aaron to the priesthood in Numbers chapter 16. And we find in Jude 3, this is what is written. And I'll finish up here because my battery's dying. Brethren, we must earnestly contend for the faith which was once for all time delivered to the saints. For there are certain men who slipped in secretly who were before old ordained to this condemnation. Wicked men turning the favor of our Elohim into indecency and dishonor and denying the only master Elohim and our master Yahushua HaMashiach. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the master Yahweh, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. So people think about this. People were saved by the blood of the lamb, but they were still destroyed afterward. How? Because somehow they went into dishonor. Somehow they went into dishonor. Verse 8, these filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh, they reject authority, and they speak evil of his glory. They dishonor their bodies, they dishonor authority, and they speak evil of his glory by what they know naturally as unreasoning beasts. Didn't we read in the first chapter of Solomon that their, their reasoning comes from themselves, which is therefore an unreasoning beast. And you see these people out here, and they are operating in the beast nature. They are operating in the beast nature. It's violent. It's criminal. It's carnal. It's debauchery. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's the culture. In those things, they corrupt themselves. They dishonor themselves. 
Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and they have ran with greed after the delusion of Balaam for a reward, and they have perished in the rebellion of Korah. The rebellion of Korah in the last days is those that are being compelled today, right now. They are being compelled to perform for Mystery Babylon. Now, the nexus of Mystery Babylon is the social security number that ties you into that whole matrix. So think about that. Think about that. That's the only number that they always want so that you can get benefits and privileges. That's the only number that ties you into that matrix. Think about that. There's another way to live. Soon, soon, brethren, you're going to see this be manifest in a day, in a day. In, I'll finish up in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. For not everyone that says to me, Master, Master, shall enter with me into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in the heavens. A great many will say, to your name, well, we have cast out demons. And in your name, we've done many wonderful signs and wonders. And then I will profess them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work Torahlessness. You that work Torahlessness. There is so much to think about here. Who are the people in rebellion? And who are they in rebellion against? Our text defined is, you refuse to honor the teachings of Moses? Well, you're in rebellion. Well, there's a whole group of people out there, isn't there, that refuse to honor the law of Moses. Well, that's a rebellion. And that's rebellion against Yahweh. It's that simple. And the reason people fall into dishonor is what? Wisdom, chapter 2, verse 1 reasoning with themselves, but not right. What was the excuse of why we don't keep Shabbat? Oh, well, it's Sunday. What's the reasoning why we don't keep kosher? Oh, well, reasoning with themselves. Because if you actually led these people to the scripture, then they would fight tooth and nail, hook and crook with you over verse and chapter, because their reasoning was coming from themselves rather than like the Bereans. Non-acceptance of the word of Yahweh. Non-acceptance of his Torah. Acceptance for them of another law. The Nicene Creed. Mystery Babylon's laws. You see the divergent life in which we live, the choices in which we must make? Oh, there's so much to teach, so much to say. I'll finish up. I said I'd finish up earlier, didn't I? I'll, I'll say it again. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. And then I'll take some questions in your chat. Hebrews 10, 26. If we sin willfully, that means if we transgress Torah deliberately, that's defined in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, what sin is. Sin is violation of the Torah. Right? So if we transgress Torah, Torah willfully, as defined, not by my reasoning, but by reasoning in the word, that word sin is defined in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. Not my words, Yahweh's word. Not my reasoning, his reasoning. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, well, what's the knowledge of the truth? Yahusha, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Then what happens? Well, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Meaning you could have been in Egypt, you could have been covered by the blood of the lamb, you could have come out of Egypt and still ended up in dishonor and rebellion and the earth swallow up and devour you. Korah. Korah partook of the Passover. He was covered by the blood of the lamb. He was baptized, immersed through the Red Sea, 1 Corinthians 10. Yet he still descended into hell. Mm, this is not a very, very popular Christian church teaching, Matthew. 
oh, this goes against all of my Nicene doctrine. Well, it does, doesn't it? Because we're not reasoning with the pastor's mind here. We're reasoning within the word of Yahweh, not ourselves. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27, but there is a certain filth, fearful anticipation of judgment and fire, which shall devour his enemies. Verse 28, anyone who has rejected or sets aside Moshe's Torah dies. Now, don't be deceived by the New International Version that changes it into past tense and says died. Oh, back then in the old days, you know, back in the days of the law, they died. No, 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 no. No, no, don't do that. Because the Greek word here is apathnesco. Apathnesco. And it means about to die. It's ongoing. It is not in the past tense. The NIV is a willful mistranslation to deceive the flock. It says, anyone who has rejected or sets aside Moshe's Torah dies in the New Testament without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much more worse punishment do you think he shall deserve who has trampled underfoot the son of Yahuwah? You see, when you start to kick out the Torah, you kick out the teachings and instructions that uphold the sacrifice of Yahusha. Because if you don't have the Torah instructions to uphold the sacrifice of Yahusha, then Yahusha was just another innocent man that got crucified by the Romans. But because the Torah upholds his sacrifice, we know that he is the son of Yahuwah and that he perfectly fulfilled everything in the Torah in relation to sacrifices, that he is the perfect, without sin, without spot or blemish, lamb of Yahuwah. If you kick out the Torah of Moshe, then Yahusha is just another innocent man that got crucified. Too bad. Too bad. You see? You've got to be careful what Torah, what law you listen to. I'm kicking out Mystery Babylon. I'm not kicking out the Torah of Yahuwah. I'm aligning myself with Yahuwah, not Mystery Babylon. I am being compelled to perform by wisdom for Yahuwah each and every day. And I am being compelled more and more to turn from my wicked, wicked ways myself and all of that life. Man, I mess myself up. I mess myself up, brethren. I mean, I just can't stand the fact that I mess myself up. Some of you never did. Man, I, I mean, I only messed myself up for 25 years, but it haunts me. The ramifications of sin the ramifications that I still struggle with because I dishonored myself for 25 years in every way, in every way. I know I have a remedy. I know I have a hope because if I didn't have a hope, I'd be suicidal, which is what Mystery Babylon is all about. That's why everyone's suicidal because they have no hope. They have no faith. Praise Yahuwah, I'm not, because I'm reborn, a man on a mission, a man full of hope, a man full of faith, a man who wants to live in honor and integrity, a man who accepts everything that is presented to me. If it's got my name on it, I'm accepting it and I'm honoring it. And then that places a contractual obligation on the other party. To deal with it. I hope this teaching helped you because it really, really, as you can see, helped me. I didn't even finish. I got three more verses to go. Verse 29. How much more worse a punishment do you think he shall deserve who has trampled underfoot the son of Yahuwah and has counted the blood of the covenant by which he was made holy, honorable, as a common thing, 
and has insulted or dishonored the spirit of favor. That's Sophia. That's wisdom. That's the Holy Spirit. Brethren, in summation, anyone who lives as though Yahushua's blood was not effective in, confer in confirming the new covenant, meaning the teachings and instructions of the covenant, the Torah written on your heart, and the wisdom of Sophia, well, then you insult Sophia, and you are rejected. How? Because you refuse to let Sophia write the Malkizedic New Covenant, which is Torah, written on your heart, a better place, by better blood, by better sacrifice, but it's still Torah. Be compelled to perform to Torah, and you shall live in honor. Thank mm -hmm. you.